Hi everyone, um, I'm here with Dr. Helen Haynes, the Federal Independent Member for Indi, um, who's going to talk to us a little bit about um, being a politician and being involved in politics and uh, how um, real young people um, can uh, do some great things. Um, so Helen, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure, Eli, and really great to talk to you. And hello to all your listeners. So I guess to kick off, like, where did you grow up and, and what was that like? Yeah, I grew up on a uh, dairy farm in uh, southwest Victoria, down uh, near a place called Colac. I guess, um, you know, how, what, when you were in year 11, what did you want to be? What were you sort of looking up and looking forward to do? Yeah, well, you know, in year 11, I was really unsure what I wanted to be. And, and um, I guess I did what lots of young people do, and that's kind of look around me to see what people did. I had some a little bit of interest in journalism. Um, we had a local paper in our town and I quite liked writing. I thought that could be interesting. I was a bit interested in teaching too. I did work experience teaching and then I thought, ah, I don't think that is going to suit me. And, and then a couple of my great aunt, they said, you should be a nurse. Be a nurse. That's a really great, great thing. That'll stand you in good stead. You'll be a useful person. So I started thinking about nursing and, and, and that's ultimately what I did. It's interesting being a politician isn't sort of, um, oh, I went to university and I, um, you know, got an internship. Um, but how did you get into politics? How did you become an MP? Yeah, well, it's a pretty long journey, Eli. So I guess for me, I set about living my life. Uh, when I did leave school, I actually, I, I kept a place at university. I applied and was accepted for a spot at at uni to study arts at, at Melbourne Uni and I, I deferred that and I went nursing at St Vincent's Hospital because that's where my aunts told me I should go and I continued doing nursing and finished that course and then I decided that I'd do some travelling overseas and I did that for about a year with a mate backpacking around the world, came home, thought it was time to do a bit more study so I studied to be a midwife and after I finished that course I moved up to northeast Victoria and I worked in, in the Wangaratta Hospital and then in the Chilton Bush Nursing Hospital. And then I thought I really needed to do some more study. I became more and more interested in broader public health and, and trying to understand the reasons why people end up in hospital or why things don't go well. So I studied a master's degree in public health. And from there, I really got very interested in research and uh, I undertook a, a PhD in, in medical science. And so I guess all along the way, I was becoming more and more interested in the, in the why rather than the what. And, and one of the whys of uh, understanding why people get ill or things don't go well is, is the policy policy levers that really impact on people's lives. Uh, so I became quite interested in politics, but never saw myself as a politician. It wasn't until 2013 when uh, I got involved with the uh, campaign for Cathy McGowan in Indi that I realised that everyday people like me who weren't politicians or weren't uh, ever involved with party politics could get involved with their own democracy and I really enjoyed it and then I did that again um, in 2016 in the next campaign for Cathy. In that period of time I volunteered to to work in, in, uh, in the office, in, in a political office, in Cathy's office um, up in Canberra and I got a, a, a really good sense then of how how things work in Canberra and I thought oh that's very useful but it wasn't until Cathy decided to retire and a few people said Helen you should you should think about running and at first I said no I don't want to do that I'm very happy in my job I don't want to do that but I was convinced I was convinced to try. I think that's a really good message for a whole bunch of young people um, who have dreams like that. Um, what, what did what does being uh, an MP, a politician, involve day to day? Well, it um, it involves a lot of face to face interaction with with the people you represent. Ultimately, my job is to represent the people of Indi. There's 122,000 voters in Indi to try and uh, represent their feelings and their voice in in the making of federal laws and in policies that go around that in the way that governments decide to spend the money and, and where they decide to spend it. But I'll tell you what a, like a typical day in the electorate looks like. Around about half past seven in the morning, I get my first message from my media advisor who has a summary of all the news that's in the local and national newspapers. 
so that I've, I've got links directly to those stories so I can read them in and be on top of the news straight away. At 8.30, I have a conversation with my chief of staff who gives me an outline of all the appointments that I might have in my diary for the day. And those appointments can range from going out to visit a school to deliver some flags and, and talk to the kids to going to a community health service and listening to some young people who may be at, say, a, a headspace talking about mental health. I may be meeting with local council to talk about infrastructure projects that they may need. It could be any of those things. So we talk through what the diary looks like. Then I usually come into my office uh, either in Wangaratta or Wodonga and we have a team meeting. We catch up with what everyone's got on their plate for the day and, and uh, where everyone is and what's going on. And then I get on with the appointments that are there. Uh, and uh, we go through like that, either out on the road or in the office until usually around 6.30 at night. And then if there's evening appointments to go to, like a dinner or a, a, some kind of presentation ceremony, off I, off I go to that. Uh, so it's not uncommon to, uh, to get home quite late. That's a pretty typical day. And then, of course, when I'm in Canberra, which is about 20 weeks of the year, I, uh, I start the day pretty early up there. I'm usually in my parliamentary office around seven and I have a meeting with my team um, at eight o'clock and we talk about the schedule for the day. We discuss the, the legislation that's going to be debated and we talk about all the, the parts of that legislation and I make decisions around how I'm going to vote or if I'm not sure, we do more investigations. And then the day rolls. In, in that, there's often media interviews with uh, radio print or television journalists who are interested in some of the stories that I'm involved with. Sometimes I've got a question to ask in the House of Representatives, so I need to work out what question I'm going to ask and why. So I've got uh, fantastic people in my team who, who really help me a lot. It's incredible. And, and I guess looking forward to the future, what do you think um, the world of politics MPs, politicians, what do you think that'll look like in the future? Well, I hope it looks a bit different to what it looks like now. Right now, if you look across the Australian Parliament, you see, particularly in the House of Representatives, you see a chamber that doesn't really reflect modern Australia. We only have 30% of uh, the seats in the House of Representatives are held by women. We only have uh, a handful of people in the House of Representatives who, who uh, reflect the ethnic diversity. Of, of our community. Um, we, we need to have far more First Nations Australians in our parliament. We need to have more women. We need to have more people from, from varied cultural backgrounds. So I hope the parliament looks different in the future. I wanna see a respectful parliament, which is safe and terrific to work in, no matter who you are. I agree with you on all of those. That sounds like a really great vision. And finally, um, what advice do you have for rural um, young people who are interested in getting into your, your um, area of work and but, but don't possibly see themselves as being politician material. I think um, if you're interested in politics, you need to do what, uh, what we're doing just now. Um, listen to as much political discussion and debate as you can. So subscribe to some terrific podcasts. I think uh, get yourself uh, really informed by reading widely and, and listening widely to, to the conversations that are happening around the nation and around the world and form, you, form an opinion. I'd then say um, follow, your, follow your passions and your dreams with your work and go out and get some life experience so that uh, when the time comes that uh, you feel ready that you want to run for parliament, that you do so having had a really good understanding of what life is like outside of, of somewhere like Parliament House. I think the best members of parliament are the ones who have got broad life experience and can really see the world from many perspectives, not just their own. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Helen, and um, thank you everyone for listening in.